very windy hello everybody welcome to squad ops session two it's a wonderful saturday night we're going to be playing operation rook here if you don't know what squad ops is it's a one life event on the squad platform this is squad ops we're hosting this event i'm here joined with cmyk matter one of our uh content creation leads as well as pen who is also um behind the scenes working the cameras making sure that everything is nice and great for you once again these official streams do have that multi-cam perspective we're going to cycle through those after we uh introduce uh matter here so matter how are you doing tonight man oh man i'm feeling it i'm ready i commanded this off earlier today so i got pumped up got all excited about it and now i get to watch it from above see what best pony does see what the other guys do man i'm excited i'm pumped this is definitely one of the more fun ops just just the terrain of narva is extremely uh varied you have the cqb alleys then you have the larger areas uh the open grass fields the moats a lot of fun and cool stuff can happen here uh but we're going to cycle through the cameras here we have uh at the top right of your screen you can see a little overlay that tells you who you're watching we're going to cycle through here and as we do you should see that name change depending on who we're switching to um, but yeah, we're going to get into the operation and what this uh, Operation Rook is really about here in a few moments. Both teams are setting in, commands are getting their briefings done, players are getting ready, and we're looking at a live time within about 10-5 minutes here. 10 or 5, I like that. Reverse order. Feels good. Yeah, 10 or 5. Reverse, reverse order. Hey, I go any order I want. <laughs> that's, that's the glory of being the glorious dictator here at Squad Ops. <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, so we're going to cycle through those cameras. Let's see who we have. Bust that bottle, man. Cody's we'll be chilling out in an MTLB most likely, so you can do it then. Assuming we have the list. All right. Sounds good. Super human, dude. Oh, we already went through. Them. Already All, right, fine. Fine. All right, so our cameras that we have tonight are the glorious Muff Bandit. Uh, always an amazing guy to watch. We'll keep a special eye on him tonight, see what he does. Very entertaining. Uh, we've got BenBot16. We've also got Burns out there, one of our new staff members in the community team, doing a great job for us already. Xbit. Uh, we've got XF in here as well. We've got Shadowed Ritual. Please, it, Evan it SMA and, and the Silverman are the cameras that you're going to be seeing tonight, along with obviously myself and Karma uh, Cut. So minutes, we'll be flying around in the air, people, but the rest of those guys will be providing those first person boots on the ground cameras, so close, so close. get you in the action. Almost, almost Man, here. those are always intense. Those first person cameras. Whenever I go back and I watch the squads and or I watch the, the VODs of these and see rounds flying in and pinging over their heads crazy stuff i love it's it. definitely you get total different feel for uh what players can see when you see that first person cam because from the air you think uh things are a lot obvious uh, and, and you can see movements a lot clear more clearly but once you get on the ground you really start to experience that uh fog of war guys let's get one i guess uh, another important thing that we should go over is that tonight anytime you're seeing these overhead cameras and we're kind of jumping back and forth with uh, karma cut and myself one big thing to remember is that the U.S. is going to be red on your screen. So anytime you see red outlines around people, that is the U.S. And the Russians are going to be blue on your screen. So anytime you see blue guys, that is Russian. That is good, and I'm glad that uh, you remember to mention that. Very important to note. Uh, this is a Russian versus, uh, versus American operation. And uh, we'll get into the op doc as soon as we nail out who we have squad leading and commanding for the Russians and the Americans. So taking a look at the list here. For the Russians, squad one will be led by Bersinger. Squad two, led by Benbot. Squad three, led by Burns. Squad four, by Digit. And commanding the Russians tonight for round one is Best Pony, who commanded previously in uh, the first session. For the Americans, we have Shadowed Ritual in squad one, Satan in squad two, Odessa in squad three, Expert in squad four, led by LaRue, who is uh, the American squad leader for, or excuse me, American command for this first round. Uh, as we uh, roll through here, uh, we're going to bring up the operation document, which will show you the assets and the uh, operation rules and objective for tonight. All right, so, as we take a look at this, for, go ahead. I don't want oh, you to fine, explain do it. Not tonight's operation. All right, all right. All right. So for the uh, Russians, they get two ARs, one LAT, one Medic. They also get two MTLBs, one transport truck, and one logistics truck. For the U.S., they get two ARs, two LATs, one medic per squad. They also get two logistics trucks. Important to note that that logistics truck 
is actually sitting at a gas station. The story here is that while U.S. forces were attacking the gas station and castle area, Russians had to retreat, left their lodgy there. So if the Russians retrieve that lodgy, they can set up a mortar cop somewhere on the map east of the Delta Echo line. And the U.S. are going to be in charge of holding that Herman Castle, the big castle on the east side of the map. So the U.S. are going to do all they can to lock down that area. Also probably try to do a, uh, a good bit to stop them from getting the Logi truck that you can see parked right here in this gas station. You can see that thing parked right there. So if the Russians manage to get this thing back, they can set up a mortar location somewhere. And with that mortar location, they can rain unholy hell on that Herman Castle. I'm excited to see if they do that. You know, Pony used the mortar cop earlier to great effect against me, actually. And I chose to absolutely not use it whatsoever, but we'll see what they do tonight. So let's take a look over at the objective itself right now. Uh, this is the castle that we're looking at. And uh, the Americans will be here shortly. They're going to set up their fob in here. They're going to get some initial sandbags down on live. Uh, but... U.S. will start here with two Lodgy trucks, as stated in the operation dock, and those two Lodgy trucks can make repeated supply runs so that the U.S. can build up their defenses on the castle. If we zoom out here the terrain features around the objective, you'll note that on the north, there's a good amount of cover with the rocks and the cliff, but on the east, there's a very steep, slight um, drop-off where line of sight is cut from the castle. So it's a very, very popular uh, routes for attack for Russia. On the south and west, however, you do have that massive, massive open field and moat that kind of deters any kind of infantry push from those sides. So looking at this terrain, we're going to look at how Pony decides to assault the objective using his assets, and I'm pretty sure we're going to have a pretty exciting round here. Oh, you know, Pony always makes an exciting round. Is this LaRue's first time commanding? I can't recall if he's commanded before. I believe he's commanded once or twice before. So that, looking at the matchups here, um, LaRue is a fairly new commander going up against Pony, who's been around for and commanded for multiple operations. So we're we're going to see how this plays out, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> team versus team. I'm, I'm predicting, though, it's going to be it's going to be just a, a little bit uh, brutal on the first game. But the second game, I think it's going to be a lot more even. We'll see if LaRue is actually bulletproof tonight. I think that that's what we can find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Looks like they might be doing the command brief right now. I'm not sure if we have the ability to listen in on that. Yeah, we're going to see if we can. Do we have anybody on that side? Looks like they're finishing up their uh, commuting briefing. Uh, as we said before, squad ups is extremely different from standard squad play. Once again, this is a one life scenario and event. That means when you go down, that is it. There are no respawns and no medic revives. As uh, right now, what we're doing is getting all the players up to speed. Squad ops is a public event. Anyone can join. So if you're interested in learning more about the platform or watching more of the platform, head over to squadops.gg or youtube.com slash squad ops to learn and watch more about the uh, official squad ops platform. Yeah, we've got all kinds of crazy stuff in there. I really enjoy the videos. Actually, this weekend, one of the things I'm going to be working on is getting those all organized into playlists. So we'll uh, have it even more convenient for you over there on the YouTube. Some good stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see it. Oh, it. Looks like they are getting ready here. It looks like they're going to use the the trans trucks to actually drive people like over to the castle like, and then they're making the stop them or bring the trans trucks back. Yeah, yeah, that's, not a smart, that's not a bad idea. I don't know why I didn't think of that. I was I was just like, hey, let's just run it, you know? <laughs> oh, man. A lot of people joining in in the chat saying ho hello to everybody. Man, that's awesome. Looks, looks good. It's good to see all you beautiful people here in the chat. Really appreciate you guys coming out and watching it without you guys. There'd be no point in us doing this. We'd just be sitting here talking to ourselves. I mean, as much as I enjoy hanging out with Karma, you know, <laughs> I kind of like to talk to other people too. Yeah, oh, we're always working on improving yeah, and making the stream okay. better for uh, for uh, everyone that's viewing. Yeah, sure. Getting the multiple cams in, getting the overlays in, making sure that everything's right, running so, as uh, smoothly uh, and as uh, professionally you know, as possible. So really, we're really gra glad to put on this uh, kind of quality of show for you guys. And uh, every week, once again, every Wednesday and Saturday at 6 p.m. Wow. Pacific, we will be hosting these uh, streams. Yeah, also, we do one earlier in the day on Saturday as well. I believe that that would be at 1 p.m. Pacific? That is correct, okay. 1 p.m. Pacific. 
Yeah, we do earlier ones there. Sometimes we don't get to have all the wonderful oh, multi-cam streaming like we do right here. Oh, but, you uh, here you know, here, it's an option. Yeah. You can check it out earlier in the day if you can't hang yeah, out at I'm night. You're injured. I got the meds. Oh, I'm a medic. I totally forgot. Come yeah, to me. Come to that one. See, it looks Neither like the U.S. are, are ferrying all their people over to the castle. So for this yeah, operation, the U.S. has to start in this castle, except for their lodgy runners. The lodgy runners will start over at main, but looks like they're ferrying everybody over there to get them into the starting location. And then we will be going after it. We will be getting into it. Is this live or recorded? It is 100% live, Mustafa. These guys are 100% in the game right now, playing it, and you will find out if they live or die in real time. Well, you listen to soothing voices like Karma Cut and mine. Mm -hmm. Playing all the latest and greatest hits. On the left. <laughs> I'm listening to uh, Best Pony's Four. brief here, and it sounds like he oh, does right. plan to repeat his uh, side of the strategy brief. from the first session this uh, morning, right. which was taking the Lodgy truck, getting that mortar right. down right. in the north, and proceeding south in a platoon line. So he yeah. is, uh, like we looked so at those terrain features before, we looked at that moat. He's going to entirely right. avoid that mode if possible, take that Lodgy, <laughs> set the mortars up, castle, and uh, proceed north to south onto the objective. So it's going to be interesting to see if he what he's learned from that first operation and see and what kind of changes he's going to make to make this plan more units, effective. Allowing them to eliminate any U.S. contacts they come across in the village with speed. We're going to listen to the end of his brief here and now, see what he's, he's doing uh, more specifically in his micro to the final stages of his assault. Some additional barrages of mortars into the castle itself. The MTLB is going to is going to lay into them with that machine. The position will be right here. Maybe somewhere close to there. All squads just kind of, you know, keep shooting at them. Just keep blasting them for a while while we just mortar the crap out of them. Then after about one or two minutes of that, um, when your squad leads think it's wise, they'll radio it in and you will smoke and cross to the castle itself. Uh, we're going to target pretty much every entrance for breaching. So, you know, kind of feel it out. Go and see what do they have there. What do they have at this entrance? What do they have over on the side protect back entrance will be which you can get overwatch on with the, the MTLB. What do they have over here at slower entrance? You know, you're gonna you're gonna figure out with your squad leads where the best place to enter is, and then you're going to frag out the US defenders and enter. Interesting, because here I thought the Lodi started the castle too. But anyways. <laughs> so uh yeah, what was I about to say? Yeah, after we... Basically, the objective, though, first, we're going to take the up half of the cast. So focus your efforts up there. We're going to take that up half. Once the upper half's skin, we're going to keep mortaring the lower half. Then command is going to yank up the mortar fob and proceed with the second MTLB in. And then assist as we clear out the lower half of the castle. Makes sense? Questions, comments, concerns? No. A big plan. A really big plan. Does everyone have that written down? All right, listening to that brief, it sounds very similar to his first strategy on session one as Russia side. He is going to continue with those mortars, and he did that with devastating effect. Mortars used in uh, round one as well, uh, using them on the MTLBs, if anyone doesn't remember. Mortar play can be very pivotal in this operation. We're going to see who's going to end up using the mortars and to what effect. But yeah, pretty exciting strategy for uh, for the Russians. They're going to start at the north and proceed southbound on a platoon line, focusing all their manpower and firepower on that north flank. Very cool. We'll see how that goes. I'm excited to see what he can possibly do with that kind of assault. I know it's hard to assault from that southern route, but it seems like the northern route, people are starting to figure out defenses for it, you know? Whether it's placing a squad up to the north to kind of flank that or kind of act as a screening element... We'll see what they kind of do to prevent that. But I'm sure Jack has something up his sleeve. The most dangerous part, I think, about that north uh, assault are those rocks that are on the other side of the road. As we uh, fly over here and take a look at the terrain features again, this one road does act as a major barrier, but only if you can keep eyes making sure that no one crosses it. The cover on the right with the foliage and the rocks provides great uh, kind of defensive cover for the Russians to get a base of fire or support by a fire position up there and suppress yeah, the uh, uh, castle. But if LaRue uses mortars to good effect on these uh, ridges here, he can completely deny that and maintain control over that northern road. I already did. 
All right, I'm gonna drive the lead MTLB. So just um, whoever your driver is for that, tell them they won't have to drive it until. Yeah, we we'll get see what they're first, able uh, to do wait, wait, here. I'm taking a look over the op dock for something here, so if you can cover for me for a moment. All right, so me and Cyrus of course. Cross over to that so it looks like the uh, Americans are getting all broken up into their squads. It does look like they're somewhat uh, staged and ready to go here. We have one squad on the parapets, one squad on the uh, upper, and one squad on the lower, with one other logistical squads that will be running the trucks for supplies. Um, three and one are doing that. And the MPLB is going to park themselves on the roof. Yeah, yeah, somebody covering your entrances just by hiding. Yeah, Don't exactly. That's why I picked that one. All right, and cool. So it looks like I was actually wrong on my interpretation of the op doc there. Apparently, the U.S. can start a security team at Maine. And this is the first time I've actually seen this done. So they will be starting a security force here at U.S. Maine. The Logies will also be running there, so the U.S. can start their logistics yeah, ones, the one got, and they can also bring the a security force. So they're going to be doing that. Interesting to see. I haven't seen this done yet, and I think that that's why I was kind of confused by it, but looks like Jack read the opdoc a little closer than I did. Good for him. It'll be interesting to see how the position of the Logies, uh, if it will cause a uh, change in how this operation plays out, or if it's just a small little uh, nuance in the beginning that won't really matter. Yeah, those MTLBs and how they choose to use them are going to be pivotal, yeah, pivotal for the assault that Russian puts together for the Russian side. The assault is going to pretty much defend on if they are able to get those MTLBs into good positions provide a good base of fire and not lose them those things are pretty squishy they're only able to take what two rockets before they pop i believe two heats yep that is right two rockets and also if we if we look at the kits here the u.s actually gets eight lats total for the entirety of their team so there's a lot of it i think there's a lot of uh a lot of different uh, yeah. tools that the Americans can use to eliminate these uh, logistical trucks. Yeah, we'll see if they're able to actually use the to great effect, or if possibly the U.S. can take them out before they do why. Two devastations. Yeah, Using the MTLBs, I feel like, is one of the really crucial so, uh, things to making sure that so your assault goes well that you on Rook. Rook is one of those operations that, uh -huh. you know, when you start at the engagement yeah, at range, you get good cover easy. fire in. No. You're able to move your guys up from pretty much any position you want if you're able to keep their heads oh, down. If you're able to keep the U.S. heads down. So, exactly. Able to do that. And it looks like we have a live time. We're going to be live here in exactly one minute and five seconds. Weapons will go live, engines will go live, and the operation will start yeah, to roll so out here. It doesn't have good sight to the south, but we can hide cool. out into it. Maybe we are can, uh, almost ready. That is 55 it, seconds away. Next to there. Uh, I mean, just Only 55 seconds, and we will be getting live for yeah, round yeah, one of Operation uh, Rook. Oh, just a reminder for you guys. Uh, our, just because uh, we get done with the first so. round after this oh, doesn't yeah, mean that we are go done. Keep going now, Afterwards, yeah. we flip the map. I, I we get everybody to switch teams, yeah, so the like, U.S. end up on the Russian five, side, yeah, the Russians end up on center. U.S., and we do Maybe this whole shindig again, so which I, I really like enjoy. I'm glad that you get to experience both sides of it whenever you come into these operations. That's one of my favorite parts. This is amusing. Looking at the Russians, they're all loaded up and ready to go. They're going to book it along that western MSR and proceed north, getting on that northern side and then capturing the uh, logistical trucks. Looks like LaRue hasn't opted to send... Uh, well, we're not live yet, but we'll see if LaRue descends, uh, decides to send a team to watch that logistical truck. And well, we're live this, now. He's got the security force pushing out. They are running towards gas stations, so he might be sending them to do that. We'll have to see. All right. <clears throat> As we can see here, these are one of the assets that the Russia gets. Uh, they're going to be using the MTLBs. These are light transport and fire support uh, assets that, the, that Russia will get to use throughout this operation. They get two of them, and as you can see, they can hold a good amount of people, 19 people, and they are pretty much thin-skinned transports. They're not, they don't really go, uh, uh, they can't really stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with strikers or BTRs, but they get the job done for uh, armored transport and light fire support. Good stuff, and it looks like the U.S. has successfully made their first Logi dump. Those two Logis made it in.
did their first dump, and now they are going to return to main. They can continue to run Logi as long as these things are up, so they can pick those apart and use them to get what kind of setup they want for their defenses. Also, I believe they get two mortars and four HMGs that they can set up at the castle. So we'll see what they choose to do with their defenses. You can really build a lot whenever you have two Logis running all day. As you know, uh, you can see that these MTOBs really are quite loud. They're not really stealthy vehicles. So it's going to be interesting to see if U.S. is able to catch this flank and pretty much predict what Pony does based upon his previous uh, performance in the first operation. These things have pretty much uh, a 500 meter audible distance. So it's going to be pretty hard to sneak these uh, too far north without getting heard. Now the LaRue's forces, that security team that started at Maine, have pushed out, and they are overwatching the Lodgy right now. So if Pony does intend to push up there and get some, uh, try to get that Lodgy out, use that mortar, he's going to have to do a little bit of work for that. Here goes the U.S. Lodgy is driving by now. This U.S. Lodgy is going to get another run in. Looks like they'll get two runs in safe. And we'll see if they're able to get any more. Those MTLBs, though, rattling along in the west. I can already hear them so loud. <laughs> Looks like they have been heard, and uh, U.S. forces are setting to counter this. But we'll see if a single squad is going to be enough to stop an entire platoon of Russians. So it looks like the Russians have started to push out some of their guys. They've dismounted them from the vehicles. And they are going to start maneuvering on this logic position. Those MTLBs are definitely heard, though. And the security force, it's squad two. So that is led by Satan. So we'll see what Satan in the does with these guys compound. that he has set up in these buildings. We'll see if he engages quicker. Uh, he's going to try to let them get to the lodgy and then engage them. Well, fuck that. I'm not engaging. The we'll see if uh, Pony's experience from round one gives him an edge in taking this compound. He knows roughly which buildings are most likely to be hot and which ones are not. So we'll see how uh, he goes about taking these compounds one by one. And if he uh, does manage to catch this Lodgy uh, with minimal casualties. This is the entirety of Pony's forces that have dismounted here and are pushing up on this Lodgy. It looks like he's going to take kind of a slow, melodic, methodical clear and see if he can get that get that Lodgy back into his command. He really wants those mortars. Those mortars can be devastating if you're on the offense and you pretty much know where the defense is going to be sitting, right? They're... They're holding in that castle. <laughs> Contact is spotted. The uh, Russians have spotted the Americans in that school. All right, so we might get first shots out. Do we know? I don't think we know if Satan has been told to hold fire or to actually engage. We'll have to see if they choose to actually engage. Any elements around the fire team sites crossing a road. So it looks like to me they have the U.S. This U.S. squad led by Satan has one of his fire teams stationed up on this building that is on the south side of gas station. And then they have another fire team in this little kind of industrial building that's off to the west side of it across the road. And then here's the entirety of the Russian team pushing up on it. Kind of taking it slow, clearing. Pony making and... the first offensive move here, rushing a fire team across. We're going to see how close these guys can get. I'm not sure if America knows that Russia sees them. Uh, it does look like they've hardened up, but Ru Russia, if they do decide to breach this building with aggression, with uh, grenades and uh, overwhelming firefire, they can very fast, very quickly sweep through this building. First shot came out. It was from the north. There's two guys stationed up in this station. Oh, here we go. Contact getting close now. They're starting to maneuver up on these buildings. Shots coming in. Is the first person down? I think we've had our first casualty already. A grenade came in and bad spacing leads to one person going down for Russia. Another gets shot for the U.S. And we have our first contact. Oh, Looks man. so far to be a one-to-one -one trade, but now uh, Russia has the uh, initiative and they have surrounded this building from two sides. We're going to see... Oh, where's the exit to this building? 
Oh, all the American soldiers now locked into this building. This is a very precarious position. There are only two exits out of this building, one off the uh, northern side and one out of the straight west side. So uh, it's going to be pretty hard to get out of that building at this time. Not only that, there are giant windows that make up the entirety of the western side of that building. Yeah, squad two that. here in a really bad position now as they've chosen one of the top hatch of the... Uh, the MTLB has rolled up directly onto the gas station and they have retrieved the Logi truck. The MTLB is now rolling out with the Logi truck. Shots are coming in. They're trying to pierce the windows, but it looks like they are going to be able to get away. That was Command himself. That was Best Pony that rolled up and got that. <laughs> that was some excellent cover fire by the uh, MTLB firing at the windows as they dropped off and recovered the, the uh, Logi. Logi took and one now, hit, but it Logi managed has to get away. Hit, yeah, but it did manage to get away. Now we're gonna see if Pony decides to pull off of this uh, point, or if he decides she to she continue and engage and close with this contact inside these buildings. It does look like we're still trading back and forth here. I think we're two for two right now. A last shot, a shot coming shot in. Coming out. Let's see if they can get it. Bravo, how you doing? Three ten, Roger. Uh, He's right in front of the No shot comes out. Yeah, so they couldn't line it up. And Pony just completely yeah. able to sweep in and just yeah, grab that Logi in the center of the intersection. Uh, so oh, that was man. quite quite a risky but uh, success, successful move for the Russians right now. Yeah, I'm surprised that they did not get those last shots in on that MTLB. That thing was a sitting duck. I think the good suppression from that MTLB managed to do it. Last shot yeah, comes in, in on the building on the west. That, that MTLB just came in guns uh, blazing, locking down those windows. Oh, and here comes the mortars from the U.S. Nearly extremely, on their own guys' uh, heads. Yeah, extremely inaccurate, not where they need to be, about 100, <laughs> 200 meters off target. So we'll, we'll see how much Russia can pull out of here with. They did make a two for four trade, I believe, but they made out with the Lodgy, and that mortar for Pony is going to be devastating. We just lost a lot There's some the more mortar system. shots coming out. We'll see where they manage to hit now. Yeah, we can see the majority of the Russian force now peeling off from this side of the map. They're going to be retreating to the west and getting repositioned. They realize, hey, you know what? We don't need to fight this. We, we completed secondary objective. We're going to continue to the staging point. And that's exactly what's going on here. All the Russian forces reevaluating, pulling back, reconsulting, and they're going to move to that staging point in the north. Those mortars still hitting far off of their mark. Russia has pulled back heavily from that location. Doesn't look like those mortars are going to do much for them. Unfortunate for U.S. Fortunate for Russia, though. Best Pony gets his guys regrouped. Let's see what kind of assault they're going to make. Satan and his guys still holding up in these buildings. Taking some pot shots back and forth, actually. There's some shots going out north. We'll see who that is. A couple of pot shots coming out from here. Bravo, He's got that AR, that saw. That is XF laying in some fire. The MTLB is coming back. The lad is getting ready. A lad shot goes oh, in on that Wazzy and misses. Extremely close. One lad on the MTLB, but it doesn't look like that's going to be able to finish it. See if they're able Good. to get another law in. Clear. Doesn't look like it. So... Hi, shit. One more. You hit him, you hit him though. Oh, that one goes in as well, and it hits a sign in the middle of the intersection, not managing to do anything to the MTLBs. And those MTLBs are now hauling ass up north. It's probably still up. Well, that was a pretty successful little maneuver there by Best Pony. Gotta hand it to him, you know. It takes, uh, it takes a special kind of guy as command to rush in there. <laughs> as yourself yeah, and pick extremely up that. Extremely risky <laughs> maneuvers uh, today by Best Pony. Uh, we're not seeing the same kind of methodical gameplay from earlier. He's making some pretty risky, uh, big risk, big reward plays here. And it's, it is, he's getting lucky. He's getting away with it, but we'll see for uh, how long. Absolutely. It looks like the MTLBs might have ran into the Lodgy that's running for the U.S. up north. Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, yeah, one of those Lodgies took a bunch of hits. It's turning around and running back to Herman Castle now. That is the U.S. Lodgie returning to Herman Castle. It had dropped its uh, supply already and was trying to make a return run to the base, but the MTLBs pushed up north. 
and they were able to find it. So it took a good couple shots. And maneuvers out. It successfully runs away, but I don't know that it's going to be taking that same route again. That route's going to be scary, I would think. We do see the uh, majority of the Russian force here now. Pretty spread thin, but they are making good time to the uh, northern objective here. You know, we're going to see where they decide to put down the mortars this time. I'm seeing something kind of crazy here. If, <laughs> if we fly out way down here to the south, one of the U.S. lodges has now decided to take a way southern route. So it looks like they are changing their route to be completely southern so that they can continue runs while the assault is going on the north. Not a bad strategy, actually. LaRue wants those before. supplies. He wants the defenses. He wants those mortars, it seems. So we'll see how that is able to go for him. But that laws is going to be making these wide U runs. He's determined that the entirety of the Russian force must be up north. So send the Lodgy down south. Smart choice. Good stuff. Uh, that's Silverman on your screen, driving that Lodgy, actually. He's the one trucking it through town, playing Euro Truck Simulator. Man, I love Narva. This is such a beautiful map. Eastern European maps are some of my favorite in squad. This, Gorodok, you know, really great maps. Really great variation in the terrain, like we mentioned before, though. Right. Like, tons of open ground, tons of CQB areas. And we can see we can see LaRue sending some sparse shots up here in the north, trying to get lucky with those rounds. Right, but I'm not sure if he's uh they don't know where our mortar is. if he's gonna hit anything. Best Pony has that Lodgy truck down. He has those supplies down. He's gonna start building his mortar. He's gonna get sighted and then execute onto that uh objective, the castle. Meanwhile, right now the remainder of his team getting regrouped in the MTLBs. Meanwhile, this squad that Satan's leading out to the west uh, has kind of gone stagnant. They're still just sitting in these buildings. I think they're still trying to chase down that. Do they know? They must. They 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 have to know that they the lodge has been removed. Has been removed. <laughs> if they don't know that that lodge is gone, I'm going to question Satan for quite a while. <laughs> They have to know. More and more to shoot their uh, wild ranging shots. Let's uh, see if he hits the lottery here. We'll see where these mortars land. Nowhere close. Oh, yeah, nowhere close. They're way southwest. But, you know, hey. They kind of don't know the location, so they're just going to try to do their best to put in some shots. Mm -hmm. He's actually running on these mortars. That is Krona Samu, a guy that earlier today had a wonderful little run as the last man standing in the second round. I, that I was quite a that. spectacle to watch. <laughs> All right, looks like Silverman has made it to Maine with that Lodgy and is now resupplying and they are going to be bringing it back in again. So we'll see how that goes. It's pretty pretty good for them that they were able to do that, that they were able to get those lodges out before they lost them, and now they can shift to kind of a southern route. Now that We see this it. platoon line from Pony coming in. He's got them spread out, and mortars are now commencing on the castle. We're going to zip on over to castle and see how effective these are. Yeah, we're over here. I've got Overwatch on, and we'll see where those come in. Best Pony Ideally, used those mortars to great my, effect uh, against my head earlier, so. All right, we can see them coming in. Boom! They hit right on the top here. One hits, two Watch hits, and three hits. They've, they've got the range. You know, the range is perfect. They just need to start walking them around that compound and try to get some kills with it. Oh, some hit lower compound. Yeah, we did talk about that mix of infantry and mortar pressure and how you need to kind of combine the two to be extremely effective. Right now, you see, without any threat of infantry, U.S. is able to just harden up in these buildings and just com be, uh, be completely safe in these, uh, in these uh, structures. Yeah, I think that they were hoping that maybe, you know, catch them unawares and that they'd be standing out in the open. But Jack's smart enough to tell his guys, get into these shelters, harden up. Oh, you can hear those mortars. Those are... Head. No yeah. silent mortars. <laughs> you can hear we those can't put coming suppressors in. suppressors on them? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> no suppressed mortars here, folks. Not in the squad. 
Pony's got his infantry uh, pushing up now, and then he's firing mortars at range. We're going to see how effective these are going to be again. Once again, there's not enough infantry pressure to really draw the uh, U.S. out into the open. So they're, they're just running for cover right now. But if he gets lucky... There's always that possibility. Ooh. Oh, and the shot lands close. One round you know, directly on top of that mortar. You know, if nothing else, he is destroying some of the sandbags. So he forces those guys to come out and dig them. But uh, here's some more mortar shots coming out in the distance now. Man, Pony just starts those mortars early and often, you know? Yeah. It's interesting. More you know, mortars you inbound about on the castle. You talk about that mix. There's mortars still yeah. coming in, hitting you can really them see. around the compound. Yeah, you can really see without infantry pressure, mortars alone don't really do too much. One thing I can say that they're doing is they are delaying the building of some of these fortifications. On the That castle. is true. That is true. Keeping the U.S. in cover means they cannot be digging up things outside. So that is one benefit. But we have to remember that Pony has a very limited amount of mortar rounds. And so he's going to have to make sure he's not expending those needlessly on, a, on open ground. He only has that one Lodgy, but he can run it as often as he wants. So we'll see if he's able to get some Lodgy runs. You know, there's an interesting scenario that allowing Lodgy runs for Russia sets up where the U.S. and Russian Lodgies meet in a field somewhere and just pass like, hey, man, how's it going? You know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Pony, his experience from uh, the first session has him set up an MTLB watching the West. He's prepared for that flanking squad on his West flank from the Americans simply based off that first, uh, that first round. So we'll see how effective... They will be. We're getting comms out from the Russians right now. They do already have eyes on that flanking squad. This MTLB is going to be able to light up these uh, advancing infantry on the west going after the mortar fob. So Pony, using the mortar fob as kind of bait, is going to uh, be able to lure these infantry in the open and decimate them with the MTLB if... Uh, he's able to uh, spot them. That is fantastic work. A good modification off what happened earlier today. I had a squad hunting his mortar fob. They didn't manage to take it out, but it looks like he has modified his plan slightly in order to make sure that that fob is protected. Good stuff. More shots come in on mortar shots coming in on the lower. Very part. close. Ooh. Yes, definitely hitting some close, uh, close shots there. Scaring some people. Making them run for cover, so it's good, you know? It looks like the U.S. was mostly able to get their defenses up. They're still running logistics, though. Oh, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Hey, Pony, they have a entrance Call goes out for Russia. It looks like they're shifting further westbound. They might be trying to counter that flank that's coming in. Or they're trying to clear the village before they make their assault. Jack has managed to push up one squad to the north here in this village. We'll see if he's able to have them hold it. This is three with fire mission. Say when ready. Uh, Shots coming in on this squad north and village. Starting nothing connects engage. them. Not yet. Muff's that about is... to engage this squad. This squad's about to get caught it's in the open. We're going to zoom over here real fast and see how close they get. Oh, Mortar's actually going out. I'm not sure if that was from... Pony, or if that was from the U.S. Very close. If they were U.S. more, I didn't hear any fire from U.S. No, nobody's that on must the border. Been, uh, that must have been Pony firing a couple rounds over there to the west. This MTLB oh. is just ready. You know, they actually got somebody here with those mortars. Pony just killed one with the mortars. Blew a guy directly out of the HMG bunker that they had set up to watch the entrance. So he is already tacked. And that's gonna hurt him. Ooh. Those mortars devastating already. If nothing else, if nothing else, they're kind of a morale breaker, you know? <laughs> you can't do anything. Oh, Muff goes down to shots from the west, unfortunately. How's that assault going on the west up there? Are they able to move in? Uh, I think the MTLB took a round, but it's still uh, deterring this northern push. 
U.S. now, I think, out of lats up here. We're going to double check that. And now, oh, no, there's still one more lat kid up here. And if he connects with this round, that MTLB will go bye-bye. Oh, wow. Here on the north side of this village. from the U.S. Here on the north side in the village, we've got close contact here. Ace Expert sitting in this building. Merrick Squad just outside, very close to him. Let's see if they're able to clear this building. Pony's forces starting to maneuver in. And starting to clear this area. Some shots go in. Crazy stuff going on right now. Now we're getting into the thick of it, you know? This is when it gets exciting. Shots we're going to see Ace if... Uh, there's not enough movement right here from Russia. They're slowly taking this village, actually. Uh, but we'll see if they're pushing up fast enough. I know Pony's running out of mortar rounds. They're making good ground here, limiting some of the U.S. troops. Uh, and it's just it's just CQB clearing at this point, making sure that they're checking the windows, checking the doors. Yeah, you know, Ace Expert just peeked that window, took a couple shots out of it, and then, you know, a lot of fire came back in on him. He pulls back, he peeks a corner, and just misses a Russian coming around it. He's going to peek it again, and he gets... Yeah, he takes down the Russian. That was Tommy. And then Ace Expert gets traded back, clearing out this village as they move. A couple guys left over on the east side of the village. And that's going to be about it till they hit these rocks. Ponies now pushes MTLB up onto the high ground. He's engaging with the MTLB, suppressing uh, what he can. I think he's already gotten one kill with the MTLB at the right-hand side of this bunker. And yep. it, it, that looks like a, that did, in fact, happen. Uh, I'm curious as to see how many more rounds... Russia has on the mortars. He still has not pushed close enough with his infantry. He needs to mix infantry and mortars to be more effective with his firepower and to give his infantry a chance to breach the compound. But if he runs out of rounds before they can reach, right, Russia's going to have a difficult time getting into the castle. To yeah, absolutely. You know, if you get stuck on those rocks as Russia and you don't have any mortar pressure to keep their heads down, pushing across this street on the north side of Herman Castle can be a tall order and now it looks like orders going out from the u.s and coming in on the u.s Not yeah it's anybody. just a big game of battleship at this point mortars going back and forth from either team so far not killing anybody in the castle we'll see if they manage to hit anybody up there on the north in about 10 seconds there's mortars hitting way off in the north not managing to find that fob Seems like now, Jack this is Russian just squad to walk in the around. north can get pincered if they're not paying attention. We talk about 360 degree security all the time. If they are not being vigilant, they will end up getting flanked. And it does not look like anyone is covering their north. Yeah, they could walk directly between that mortar cop location and the forward assaulting force that Pony has here. And if they're able to do that and push south, come into this village behind Pony's lead forces, it could do a lot of damage to this push before it even gets started. Once we start hitting, then we gotta... I believe that squad is actually squad two. That was the one that was commanded by Satan that we saw over at gas station earlier. They have now maneuvered themselves clear up on the north side. Oh, and here comes a Lodgy. That's a... That is a Russian Lodgy that's trying to make it to the mortar cop, it looks like. Yes, it is. They've driven the... This is interesting. Russia has driven their Lodgy directly into village, almost using it as fire bait, you know? The MTLB is right next to it. And... The MTLB this is MTLB is on up. the north side now. Yeah, it's checking out this uh, U.S. infantry squad that doesn't have lat. And now this entire squad, because they don't have lat, is kind of stuck against uh, a rock in a hard place. All pretty much stacked up in one building. Um, and we're going to see if they're able to maneuver out from underneath this MTLB. It's gonna well, be right now, this MTLB has a pretty good uh, lock on this squad. It's that T-Rex stomping through the, the forest, you know? Pretty much. It's clacking around. Glass of water bouncing on the table. Everybody trying to hide. If we don't move, it can't see up? us. It's vision. It's based on movement. Incoming mortar rounds from U.S. Alright, what's, what's happening? Are we taking contact from our side and contact from our front? 
Oh, these MTLBs are moving a pincer, this US squad. No, oh, man. Incoming mortar no. rounds dangerously close to these. Uh, you know, MTLBs. it hit that MTLB. It hit the MTLB enough to put it down at low orange health. Oh, you're, you're kind of like a it fragmented, or it fragmented enough. He's just around too much. He needs to stop these guys from bouncing around. They're gonna end up walking into a lat. Yeah. Well, this. uh... Oh man! No, now mortars raining in on top of the Russians' heads on the east side of village. That MTLB has maneuvered into position. I think that they think the village is mostly clear. This is that MTLB just rolled through. So. Oh, and there goes the MTLB. That thing pops the instant One it pop on the MTLB. The image on the open pony actually now. I have no idea what's going on. That there's there's no real clear plan here. He's kind of just kind of bum rushing him along the coast at this point. All right, we'll see if he's able to actually make something of this. You know, now Pony's saying everybody just get down here. We're gonna have to all go in. So it looks like he's going to try to do a big singular assault on this compound. Breaching tactics are difficult on this castle. They're not impossible. Yeah, we had a successful breach earlier. Yeah, he does not have mortar support. And now one MTLB gone. He's going to have a really, really hard time pushing this cap. I don't think he's going to be able to take it with the resources he's got left. And yeah, that mortar actually just sitting empty now in the north. Be on it. Mortar's raining in. Mortar's raining now. Get two, almost three Russian soldiers. And Pony's squad, Pony's platoon is panicking. MTLB, the second one, is maneuvering up into position. Odessa squad there next to him. Not a lap between any of them. One last shot comes in. It hits low on the rocks. And they start returning fire. Ripping apart the walls of this Herman Castle, you know. This thing's made out of thick concrete, though. It's hard to pen some of these walls. The one saving grace I could see happening by uh, by Russia is if they can reach that compound quickly and fast enough to where they can end up holding the castle and repelling everyone that's outside. Because U.S. has committed two full squads worth of infantry outside of the cap. You know, that squad that Odessa has up here on the north starting to take fire from that MTLB is just stomping around. One goes down. They've traded back and yeah, forth. And it looks Pony like there's only four take, Russians. Yeah. Pony did go. not take the time to clear the compound of this uh, this northern area. It's really biting him in the back. Oh, man. Mortar's landing directly on top of the MTLB. It gets knocked down to yellow health. Those mortars deadly accurate. He's making a very bad mistake of rushing past compounds he has not cleared before. This MTLB pushing into territory that infantry has not cleared. And he might have I'm it stuck. He might sure get that MTLB going... stuck. What is nope, going on enough. here? The MTLB now pushing with one infantry on the north. But here comes the assault on the eastern side. That infantry sol soldier that was running across the field was down. Here comes the assault on the east side of the compound. A whole squad has managed to push in here. And now grenades rain out. We'll see. They've got a I good number there. I don't know. He still only has a one-sided attack going on here. This is going to be extremely hard for uh, this platoon to push. More shots go in on them. They know where they are. Rue and his boys definitely know where they are. They're they're reacting. They're getting themselves into position. Yeah, Pony's just got his platoon in a very sticky situation Oh, another here. one goes down on the east. Oh, Single God. point breach with no mortar support. I don't think he's going to be able to take this castle. We talked you about know, before the waste of uh, mortar rounds, and now he does not have any. And it's it's killing him. Another one goes down on this eastern side. They're just getting picked off of these walls as they try to make it up. Black goes out, barely misses the MTLB. By the way, that U.S. force that was coming around, Satan and Odessa squads, have now maneuvered into position. One shot in on the MTLB. It's burning. He gets out. It looks like it's going to pop. It might pop. No, maybe not. 
it's still able to function. I, I so think close. this is going to be the uh, the end here. Pony getting his squad in a really bad position. Not quite sure what the call was to rush this. Uh, he had all the time in the world. And, uh, yeah, he ended up pouring everyone into a single point entry with no mortar support. We can see that smoke coming out, but it's a little bit too late now. Yeah, all of his forces up on the north side have been wiped by the forces of Satan and Odessa. All there is is one MTLB up here, and I believe it is being soloed. Uh, the driver got out for a moment because he thought it was going to pop, and he, uh, he got frag grenade, So, Oh, there it goes! The MTLB pops. Down goes the MTLB. So now just this assault, and there's only four guys left? Looks like four guys left up here. About to be one in a second here. No one's watching the flank. Yeah, this was uh, this was a really poorly executed uh, round, I must say. Another flank comes in here. Best yeah, pony, the last person alive at this point. Oh no, he's bleeding too. He manages to bandage himself, and now he's just sitting in a hole here. He's about to get shot in the face, though. Some more shots come out at him. Here they go. Fight here between Best Pony. And that is Krona Samu. Krona Samu, what a guy. Always in the action. I like to see that. Oh, he takes some shots with Pony there. They trade back and forth. Pony gets hit. He's running. Pony lasting a lot longer than he should be right now. The... <laughs> Tony Samu is actually getting his law out. Oh, he manages to bandage himself. And oh, there he goes. He's game. down. That is GG. And that's end of round one. Pony making some critical failures that led to a pretty massive wipe. Not quite sure what was going on there, but we'll see if he can pull it back with a solid defense in round two. Thank you so much for joining us for Squad Ops round one. We're going to cut to a quick intermission here, and we'll be right back with the second round.